So starting off, go ahead and put Rylian in the center. Anya can be over on the right hand side, dealing with the spiders. I would also toss your reinforcements over on the right hand side. This level is the final level of the second world. So as expected, we get a nice boss fight at the end. Stay tuned for that. But overall, despite it being the last level, it was not very hard. Even on better mode. This is not a particularly tough level, at least in my humble opinion. A couple special mechanics, you can see these enemies that will shut down your towers when the boss, I guess, raises her hand or whatever, and you see those glowing circles on the ground that indicates that a reflection of her will appear on the battlefield. That can be a great time to use your hero ability, or at least make sure your heroes are there to take it out, because it will shackle down your towers, and sometimes when there's a lot of enemies on the board, having your tower shut down can be very detrimental. So just pay attention to that. On wave 4, whenever those... Shacklers? Not Shacklers. Lurkers appear. Or Stalkers. Go ahead and pop your hero power at the top, just so you can get some chip on them. The Dante's power is really, really good at dealing chip to these Stalkers. As for towers, the Dune Citadels are going to be our Archer Tower. We unlocked them last level, and I really like them. I think they're, I don't know, kind of like Archer Towers that do AoE effect, but not quite as long range. The Void Lurkers, you can see, are kind of like Stalkers. They're fast flying enemies. You definitely want to prioritize them, because otherwise they may try to slip by your defenses. For upgrades, we're going to max the two towers in the center first. The Necromancer Tower and the Flame Spitter. I micro Anya a lot. But for Rylene, sometimes they move her over like on wave 6, but for the most part she stays in the middle. Also note, you get the armored nightmares coming out of the portal. It can be very helpful to drop Rylene's hero ability stall at least one of them out. By wave 7 we have a level 4 flame spitter. We also have a level 4 dune Sentinel on the left hand side. And a level 4 necromancer tower. These tamed stalkers are a great target for Dante's or Anya's hero power. Dante will do a lot of damage to it. I would prioritize upgrading your Dune Sentinels before you upgrade your Mage Towers as they do a ton of physical damage against the spiders and the acolytes.
For tower upgrades, I would put points into your flame splitter because it has so much coverage, it's going to be able to hit everything. Rylene's Hero Power, the Dark Knight is so good at stalling out those crystal golems. So if you have trouble with them, just simply plop a Dark Knight on top of it and you effectively lock it out of the game for a while. You can see how effective the Dune Sentinels are at killing these Acolytes off. The blades bounce back and forth, do tons of damage. We just want to make sure that these Stalkers die, otherwise they may cost us a life. I would say they are really the only enemy you have to worry about. Level 4 Mage Tower, of course, really good against these Arbored Nightmares. I'm not investing any points into the Mage Towers, but having a level 4 makes a big difference. One thing I am doing is getting the Demon Pit maxed out at the top there. I built that at level 12, or wave 12. It's going to be really important installing these guys out at these final waves. We have stalkers coming on the right and the left hand side now. Sort of a DPS check just to make sure you have enough physical damage. It would be a good idea to use your Dark Knight to stall out these abominations while your towers take care of these stalkers. Because abominations are very slow and you're never really worried about them getting past your defenses, they will get stalled out forever and die by the demon pits and the mage towers. Other than the towers in the center and the demon pit, I don't really put many points into upgrades. I experiment a little bit with the Dune Sentinels, but I don't think it makes too big of a difference. I would recommend just making sure the rest of your towers are at level 4. We are cruising on in to wave 15. This is the final wave before the boss fight. Couple more feeble attempts by the boss to try and wreck our defenses, but as long as you're paying attention and take out the mirrors before they do much damage, you should have no trouble. They can really just, they can only disable your towers and I think they shield enemies if they're in range, but not a problem. Enough. It's time for you to bow before us. Plot twist, King Danus is corrupted. He is now fighting against us. You'll notice that the Dark Lord, was it Venisnot? You can click on him, which I should be doing, and click on one of his three abilities. You can either summon dudes, which walk down the path and stall enemies. You can also do direct damage, and then you can also trap Danus. But to be honest with you, the boss fight was a bit of a pushover. Just use the abilities as soon as you get them, so you can get as many as possible. There's no reason to hold on to them. 
you'll see the little icon next to Ben is not, where you can select your abilities. And just look how fast his HP is going down. Maybe 10% HP left is a pretty easy fight, especially since our Dark Knights can stall them out. And with that, it is GG. Grr, this is not the end. Going into the portal. Eileen, give him strength. Arr. I see your vacation has done you wonders, you. Wait, you're the bad guy. You should pay for your mischief. But you're right. Huh, I've always been. So what happens now? We may have our differences, but we have a bigger threat in common. How ominous. So, up eight upgrade points, new hero, and a new tower. Rocket gunners. We get a new area of the map. The final area, by the way. And a new hero, so Therian, she is really good. I will be using her in the Heroic and Iron Challenge for this level. We get some upgrade points and a new tower. I like the new tower as well, Rocket Gunners. They're essentially a barracks that you can use either in fly mode or in grounded mode. And upgrade points, which we'll be putting into Battle Fervor. And then going over to the Tower Tree and putting some points into that. Eight points is very generous. It's a lot of points. Anyway, I think that is all for today. You guys have a good one.